Hi, I'm Laurel, and in this example, we will be performing attribute selection based rough sets with heuristics. Let's work this problem together. This system contains eight tuples labeled X, four condition attributes labeled A, B, C, and D, and one decision feature labeled E. Condition attribute A has two possible values, 1 and 2. Attribute B has values 0, 1, 2. Attribute C has values 0, 1, 2. The last condition attribute is attribute D, which has two possible values, 1 and 2. Our decision feature is attribute E, which has three possible values, 0, 1, 2. Now we can begin searching for Redux. A Redux is the minimum number of attributes in a system that preserves its indiscernibility relationships. Attribute E is not rough. When examining the information system, we can see that there are no identical tuples with different values for E. Now we can begin searching for Redux. The next step is to search for the core. Attributes which are part of the core cannot be removed from the system without creating indiscernibility. To find the core, we remove each attribute one at a time and test to see if this creates indiscernibility. An attribute is part of the core if it cannot be removed from the system without causing tuples to have the same values for the conditional attributes and different values for the decision feature. Look at what happens to this system when we remove attribute A. We examine x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, and x8. We can see that attribute A is not part of the core, so we can move on to attribute B. We repeat the process with attribute B, checking each tuple. Start with tuple X1, move on to tuple X2. We see that with the removal of attribute B, tuple X2 and tuple X6 are identical. However, this does not create an indiscernibility relationship because X2 and X6 have the same values for the decision feature. We continue by looking at X3. X3 is identical to X7. However, unlike with X2 and X6, with the removal of B, this does create an indiscernibility relationship. X3 and X7 have identical values for A, C, and D, but different values for E. This means that attribute B is part of the core. We can continue by looking at X4, X5, X6, which we addressed earlier with X2, X7, which creates an indiscernibility relationship with X3, and X8. Because without attribute B, tuples X3 and X7 are indiscernible, attribute B is part of the core. We continue by checking attribute C. We repeat the process we just did on attributes A and B. Check X1. Then we look at X2. X2 is identical to X3 with the removal of attribute C. However, this does not create indiscernibility because they have the same value for E. Continue by looking at X4, followed by X5, X6, X7, and X8. Attribute C is not part of the core, as no indiscernibility relationships are created when it is removed from the information system. Lastly, we check attribute D to see if it is part of the core. Repeat the steps we just completed, checking each tuple for indiscernibility. Attribute D is not in the core. Now that we have determined which elements are part of the core, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to remove all attributes that are not in the core. In this case, the only attribute is B. We combine B with E and find as many rules as we can using simply the core and the decision feature. Let's start with B2. We cannot make any rules using B2 because with B2, X1 and X7 
e is equal to 0, and in x5, e is equal to 1. In order to make rules with x1, x5, and x7, we need to add another attribute to remove the inconsistency. Now let's look at the tuples where b is equal to 1. We cannot make any consistent rules with b1 either. In tuples x2 and x3, b1 implies e2, while in tuple x8, b1 implies e1. In order to make consistent rules, we need another attribute to resolve the inconsistency. Now that we've looked at b2 and b1, we can look at b0. The order is really irrelevant. In the tuples where b equals 0, there is still inconsistency. In x4, b0 implies 1, and in x6, b0 implies 2. We cannot make any certain rules. In order to resolve these inconsistencies, we begin adding back attributes one at a time. First, we try attribute A. We examine the system to see how many rules we can make using attribute A. If we start with tuple x1, we see that it is identical to tuple x5 except for the decision feature. Because of this, we cannot make certain rules using x1 or x5 without adding more attributes. However, when we look at tuple x2, we see that with tuple x3, we can create a rule a2 and b1 implies e2 with a support of 2. We continue making rules. Using x4, we create a1 and b0 implies e1 with a support of 1. x5 has the same values for the conditional attributes as x1, but a difference in the decision feature, so we cannot use it to make rules right now. We can make a rule with a support of 1 using x6, a2 and b0 imply e2, and we can make another rule with a support of 1 using x7, a2 and b2 imply e0. Lastly, we can make a rule using x8, a1, b1 implies e0. So when we use conditional attributes a and b, we can make one rule with a support of 2, four rules with a support of 1, and we have two tuples which we cannot make rules with. Remember, in this algorithm, we are trying to find the reduct which generates the best rules. Ideally, we want rules with high support and 100% confidence. Now that we've finished examining A and B, we move on to B and C. We can generate one rule with a support of 1 using tuple X1, B2 and C0 imply E0, one rule with support of 1 from X2, B1 and C1 imply E2, we can make another rule with a support of 1 using x3. b1 and c2 implies e2. We can make yet another rule with support of 1 using x4. b0 and c2 implies e1. And using x5, b2 and c1 implies e1, also with support of 1. Continuing through the system, we can make another rule with support of 1 using x6. b0 and c1 implies e2. Using x7, we can make b2 and c2 implies e0, still support of 1. And using x8, b1 and c0 implies e1, still support of 1. When we use reduct b and c, we can make 8 rules, all with support of 1 and 100% confidence. Reduct bc is better than reduct ab because it generates more rules, and more importantly, unlike ab, BC does not have any tuples which have the same conditional attributes and different decision features. Lastly, we can move on to examining reduct BD. Tuple X1 has the same conditional attributes as X7, and we can make a rule B2 and D2 implies E0 with a support of 2. Similarly, X2 can be combined with X3, making a rule with a support of 2, B1 and D2 implies E2. We can make a rule B0 and D1 implies E1 with a support of 1 using tuple X4. Using tuple X5, we can create a rule with a support of 1. B2 and D1 implies E1. And using X6, we can make a rule with a support of 1. B0 and D2 implies E2. X7 is already being used in a rule with X1. This rule has a support of 2. Lastly, we can make a rule using X8. B1 and D1 implies E1 with support of 1. 
Using reduct BD, we can make two rules with support of 2 and four rules with support of 1. Like BC, BD does not have any tuples which have the same conditional attributes and different decision features. BD is internally consistent. Now we can compare the different reducts and choose the best one. As we determined earlier, reduct AB lets us create one rule with support of 2, four rules with support of 1, and we have two tuples that we cannot create certain rules for. Reduct BC lets us create eight rules, all with support of one, and because there are no different decision features, they all have a confidence of 100%. Our last reduct, BD, lets us create two rules with the support of two and four rules with the support of one. We select Reduct BD because it does not have any inconsistencies and it makes rules with the highest support. Let's write out the rules we generate using Reduct BD. Using BD, let's start with the first rule. We can make a rule using tuples X1 and X7 with B2 and D2 implies E0. This rule has a support of 2 and a confidence of 100% because every instance of B2 and D2 implies E0. We can make rules using X2 and X3. Specifically, B1 and D2 implies E2. Like the previous rule, it has a support of 2 and a confidence of 100% because every instance of B1 and D2 implies E2. Now we can move on to the rules with support of 1. Tuple X4 lets us make B0 and D1 implies E1. This rule has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. Tuple X5 lets us generate the rule B2 and D1 implies E1. This rule has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. Tuple X6 lets us generate the rule B0 and D2 implies E2 which, like the previous rules, has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. Lastly, tuple X8 lets us generate the rule B1 and D1 implies E1. It has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. So in this problem, we found the best reduct, BD, by finding the core, B, and then selecting the best other attributes to add to form the reduct. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and please check my channel for other videos.